In React.js, we can use the conditional rendering to show or hide elements depending on the JavaScript code we write or execute. So just an example, a quick example here, we've got two cards next to each other. And probably the first conditional rendering that I can show you is the conditional rendering of the GSX that you are going to display. So let's just imagine that before we would have some kind of condition that would be untrue. We would never render what's under that. But let's say that we would have a const loading on true and we would put this loading element here that would switch at some point. Here we can see that while we have a loading on true, we would show actually this piece of code that we call usually skeletons. All right, so we've got that. And suddenly if I turn it to false, look at this, we have the cards appearing. So to start this lesson on condition, I would like to, I wanted to show you this because here, remember in JavaScript here, actually in GSX, we got JavaScript so we can use the basic JavaScript uh, that we should use in any script, okay? So just now I'm going to open the console and I'm going to show you something quick, quickly also. Just going to command that and I'm going to say if true, okay, console log hello, okay? So basically here, and we don't get actually hello between strings, there we go. Here we can see that we got the two elements appearing here. So the conditional rendering can also be triggered inside the JavaScript part of your GSX file. So if you didn't follow the previous course, down here we got some HTML, which is rendered actually. And up here we can write some JavaScript just before rendering the piece of the template, actually the piece of UI that we want to show. So here we've got a good example here that uh, what's the condition, the, what the condition can do inside JavaScript. Okay, so basically if you did JavaScript before, there is no um, suspense here, no spoiler, you know this is working like this. All right, so can I do this? Okay, so let's say that instead of having this um, form of code here, this format, can I do that? So here, if loading, I would have here a condition open in here and I would have this and else I would have this. Yes, you can definitely do this, okay? Um, the problem here with a GSX file is that you usually need to return something. You cannot create a, a GSX file that doesn't return anything. It's not going to work. Okay, so basically if you would like to return a string, it would be possible. If you'd like to return a number, it would be pos possible also, etc, etc. But here this um, kind of JavaScript code that we, we all um, um, write is also working. What I did previously is the shorthand of this code. So basically this piece of code is equal to this one, okay? So if we are on the loading state, we return that and otherwise we return this, okay? So that's the uh, first actually possibility. Let's try to make it a little bit simpler for this demonstration. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just going to um, remove this part here. And let's say that we would have um, a message variable, okay? And we would like to uh, write um, basically different conditions in here. So let's say that um, we would have also a variable called is logged in. And on this case here, I do it on purpose because is logged in would be a variable related to your authentication system. So if you are uh, working on a front end application, you are probably working on an authentication system and somewhere in your app, you will have the status of the current user. Is he logged in or not? So basically what we could do here is to check if the current user is logged in. And this is totally possible to do something like this, okay? If you are logged in, I would like to show something. So let's say that if we are logged in, we would have a message and in this message, we would have H1, okay? And we would have you are logged in, okay? After that, if we don't uh, have any information about the user, is he authenticated or not, we could have another uh, message here, version of the message that would be, you are not logged in. And then at the end, what you could do is to just return a div with the current message, okay? So here we can see that I'm not logged in. 
If I turn it to true, suddenly I'm logged in. So here, it's a first step to show you that the authentication system will probably, because there is another possibility, will probably work for you with the conditional rendering. If you are logged in, we show a piece of the application. If you are not logged in, we show another piece. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, there is another possibility, which is to work with the middleware in Next.js, for instance, or to work with roots, but we are going to look at this later. Okay, here it's dummy uh, JavaScript. The shortest, the short version of, of that is more like, is it logged in? Okay, here, and then I can return here this H1 like this, or you are not logged in, so I can remove that. And here we can see that we got everything working, and if I put false, it's, it's working. At this step of the course, I must tell you that here, our variable is not reactive because we don't use user state. Um, you need to use user state if you want it to be reactive, but again, it's going to be on the listen of user state that is coming just after. Um, if you write this kind of code here with variable ja native JavaScript variable like this, you are going to face some issue in terms of reactivity. I'm just showing you this in this lesson to show you, to talk about the conditions, but you should not do um, you should not do that. You should not have a variable like this that you would change like this. It should be with user sta state to be reactive. Okay, so here we've got a shorter version, and an even shorter version actually <laughs> would be simply to have the H1 down here. So here I would open my here my tag, and have here is logged in. Okay, here, and I would have you are logged in here or you are not logged in. So I need to put some space here, not logged in. And there we go. And we could even get rid of message. It's an even shorter version in here. Okay, so here we are using the um, ternary conditional operator, okay? Here, this is called the ternary con conditional operator. And we switch between uh, those two pieces of string depending on the status. All right, so this was actually a first example. So I'm going just to remove that and come back to my cards. You can see that I got two cards. I'm just going to remove that. And by the way, I'm using here Tailwind CSS. Let's say that we would have a list of messages, okay? So I would have messages, and in those messages, I would have, hello, uh, how are you? Okay. And the second one would be, I am fine. And here, it doesn't make any sense because we need to have the users also, but I'm just going to put that. Um, what about you? I am fine. Dot, what about, about you? Okay. I am fine also. Okay, there we go. So we got these messages in here. And what we would like to do is to loop through those messages and to show them in this card, okay? So basically what we would do is to type message map here and we would have the message itself and we would have our card and inside we would have the message and we could put as a key here basically the message itself. There we go. It's just for, for this. So suddenly we got all those messages in the, in the right order, which is really cool. And there is another uh, conditional um, uh, rendering solution that we can use. It's the uh, logical operator, okay? So let's say that here, this map is going to execute a loop on all those messages, okay? So it's going to pass from zero to one to two and the last message, okay? But what if we don't get any message and we don't wanna do the map, okay? Or what if for another reason we would have an operator that would show or hide the messages? What we would do here is before my map here, put message length. We would like to check here uh, that the message length is superior to zero. And we put those two ends here, this logical uh, end and end operator to uh, display or not the messages, okay? So here we can see that we check if we got messages and if we got messages um, in the array, we, do the operation we map. Okay, let's just open a div 
Okay, and in this div, I'm going to put here the uh, the same actually the same code that I had before with a new solution, which is here the map. So here I'm going to put class um, messages, and we are going to look at the uh, actually at the HTML elements that we got here. Okay, you can see that I got my div messages, and now that I put this operator here, this logical operator. Um, basically, if I remove all the messages, this div should disappear. If I don't do that, if I just, let's say, if I just remove the, the, this operator that I got here, and I remove all my messages, let me save, we can see that I still got my div, okay? If I put back here the operator that I had, so met message length superior to zero, and I remove again the messages, we can see here that the div uh, class messages disappeared. So um, this is useful for situation where you want to render a component only if there is a certain condition on true. Of course, here I'm working in line, but it can also work with components, okay? So I'm just going to yeah, do that. I'm going to transform this div up here in a message item. So if I go up or if I go, for instance, in any um, in any um, component file that I could have, for instance, let's say that I would return that. And if I use here my loop, <coughs> I'm going to put message item. And as a message here, I'm just going to use the spread operator to pass my message. There we go. All right, I had an error because I didn't push message as a prop, but now it's fixed. All right, so here we can see that even on my component that I'm showing in here, and I could put a grid and gap, for, for instance, a grid, a gap two, there we go. We can see that even on a component, I could put some uh, condition to show it like this, okay? What I would do is before, open a loop and true and this, and it would work, okay? Here, my editor is removing it because it's completely done. But uh, <laughs> we, we, we got the possibility to, to do this, okay? So basically, here we've got the possibility to use logical operator. Okay, another possibility. So um, let's say that we would have, instead of those messages here, we would have, um, uh, basically, I'm going to remove that. I would have a role and it would be admin, okay? Let's say that I would have the role admin and I'm going to remove that. I'm going to remove this message item also and start all over. Okay, let's say that we would like to um, return and use um, the switch operator, the switch statement to uh, return something. Okay, let me just create a new function called say hello. Okay, and this function say hello will have a, a switch statement. And this switch statement is going to look at the role. So let's say if I would have an admin, I would like to return an H1, let's say an H1 here, welcome admin, okay? It's totally possible to do that. So here, down here, what I would do is to use say hello, just call say hello. And there we go, we've got welcome admin on the top like this, okay? Let's say that I would have another case that would be manager, I would be welcome manager. Okay, so I would change that one. I would have welcome manager appearing, okay? Even if I got admin. So here we've got a good example and I could end up on this. Let's say that I would have a regular user. So welcome user, okay? Let's say that if we don't get anything or what else, we would have welcome user. So here we can see that if we have multiple conditions, we can use the switch statement to get a cleaner code. I just showed you different way to use conditional rendering in React and you can use them in very different cases. It's a very good advice to tell you that you should use as much condition rendering as possible depending on the case you want to use it, all right? So I showed you basically the ternary operator, I showed you the logical operator and here the switch. It depends on what you want to do but most of the time you are going to use those three methods.